on the balance of probability, are we alone in the universe? And second part to that question, if we're not, is it wise to seek contact with those other sentient life forms? I think the balance of probability is that we are not alone. Um, If we are alone in the universe, then that has interesting implications. It means that the origin of life on our planet was a supremely improbable event. So improbable that we're probably wasting our time trying to work out how it happened. Um, But I don't believe that. And I I do actually believe that we are one of many um, uh, life forms in the universe. And I would love to know what what the others are like. I mean, I'd, I'd love to know how unique we are. I'd love to know, I, I, I could make a few predictions. I mean, I think I could predict that um, there's going to, it's going to be Darwinian. Um, it's going to be, um, it's going to have some kind of digital genetics. Um, there's got to be, there's got to be a, a very accurate genetic system. We could make predictions of that, of that sort. Um, is it wise to, uh, well, first of all, there's a very there's a big distinction between life and sentient life, um, uh, intelligent life. Uh, the um, intelligent life is a, a big step further, and so if there's there's probably a lot more life around than there is intelligent life around. It's, it's a big barrier to get through there. Um, and intelligent life, if we ever encounter it, we'll almost certainly encounter it not physically. We won't actually meet them because the distances will be too great. Um, but um, we will most likely to meet them through radio waves. Um, SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, where they have actual dishes pointing out, looking for signs of intelligent life. Um, I don't think it's likely to be unwise to respond to any such messages that we find, that we hear, because the distances, again, are so great. and. Um, you, you, we won't be able to have a conversation. I mean, even even the nearest star um, is 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 so far away that you could you could only send a message and then you'll all be dead before before you get. With current yeah. technological yeah. levels of yeah. development, wouldn't we be a little bit like the Navajo sending a message in a bottle to the to well, if, Spain in the fourteen yeah, fifties? Yeah, but, but but if you believe Einstein, um, then then there is a, a, a limit to to. to how fast information can can travel? Is it limited to the speed of light? Yes. Um, and so, um, the the I mean, the two science fiction books that I've read, which um, come to grips with that that problem, is you you um, Fred Hoyle's um, A for Andromeda and uh, Carl Sagan's Contact, where um, both authors face up to the fact that um, the distances are too great for direct control of humans, for, for direct manipulation of humans. We don't have to fear that they actually come in flying saucers and, and, and run our lives. How, and you can't run people's lives by radio unless both books face this, come to the same conclusion. The, the instructions are build a computer which will then control humanity. Both authors, I don't know whether they independently thought of it or whether one of them, I forget which, which of those books came first. Um, so the, the extraterrestrial intelligence sends information c- telling people to build a computer which will do certain things. And the, the original senders of the information may be long dead because it takes so long for the information to get here. But once the information is here, then the computer can work in short-term time and can um, manipulate us. And, and in both cases, um, that, that, that's what is a very interesting science fiction idea. Uh, and that's, I think, the only w- way we need to be afraid. We're not going to be visited by people in flying saucers. That, I think, is too improbable. <laughs>